Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be um, diving into like a mini series where I'm going to be attempting to recreate this uh, really nice minimal website. So formstudio.site. Um, you can see they implement some really cool features on this website. So when we scroll down, we get this video that comes into the screen and the viewport and then it stops as you get to a, when it's when the video is centered and then scales to the viewport. Um, you can then see, we move on to this next section, this project section where the developer has implemented this horizontal scrolling, which looks really nice. Um, and then as you get to the end of this section, we move on to a blog section here. And again, they're using like this sticky, um, like parent div to center the content and then start scanning it backwards as it gets to the center of the screen, really nice effect. And then it finishes with this nice circular reveal animation. And then we finally end up with a video um, section down here and then a final reveal. Okay, so there's some really nice elements to this website. Although it's really minimal, I really like um, the kind of effect of it. So what we're going to do in this first part, as you can see, I've just created like the hero section here. And then we have our about section. And then we, we're going to implement this video coming into the viewport and then scaling up when it enters the uh, viewport like so until we get to the bottom. Um, so yeah, this is, as I said, it's going to be a multi-part series. We're going to, you know, next tutorial, we'll be looking at the project section and then the subsequent blog section, and then we'll just um, add all the, the nice nifty animations at the end, just tidy it up. But yeah, so I hope you enjoy guys and yeah, any questions, give me a comment, but yeah, let's get going. Thanks. Okay guys, so you can see, to get started with this project, um, I've just opened up a new project in VS Code here. Um, we've got a index.html, we've got a style.css file, and then I've got a folder here called JS, and I've just stored my app.js file in there for now. So for this first part, we're just going to be creating this kind of hero section, or recreating this, and then we're also just going to, um, we're going to add uh, this video here. So when, when we scroll down, you can see that we um, have this video come into the viewport and then we can, as we scroll, the, the um, video scales to the size of the viewport. So that's just the first kind of um, effect I want to get in here with this project. So let's just do that now. So I'm going to come into our index.html, make it a bit bigger. And then um, let's just get the boilerplate code up and running first. So we'll just emit um, some basic HTML5 template in VS Code. And then I'm going to do a script source at the bottom here of the body. And we can just point that towards our JS folder and our app.js file. That will be our main JavaScript file for this project. And then I'm going to specify this as a module as well, because we're going to be basically, we're going to have other like utility JavaScript files. Um, we're going to have a project JavaScript file, which we can then import in um, to our file, into our JavaScript file. So if I just show what I mean there, so if we just create a new file, we'll just call this utils.js. And then we're going to have, let's just create a function in here, which we're going to use later in one of the um, next videos of this uh, series. And here we just, this takes on a start, end, and a time variable. And then this returns uh, start times one minus T and then we'll do plus end times t. And I'll explain this when we use it, but for now, I'll just show you what this type module does. What we can do here from this utils.js file, we can export this function. So we can export the alert function that we just created. And now as this is, a, as this is specified as a module, this app.js, we can now import this in. So we can just say import lerp from utils, we need to add the JS extension at the end. And now if I console.log that lerp function, you should see if we open in live server, if we go to our console, you can see that we've actually imported that lerp function. Okay, if we don't specify this as a module down here, if we take this out, you'll see we cannot use the import statement error occur. So that's why we have to specify that. So that's just what the module attribute does. Now in our header, let's just go to, uh, let's just link to our style.css file, like so. And then I'll just say in the title, we'll say form. Okay, um, so that's, um, 
let's now move on to the actual just the hero section okay so we just get this nice centered text you can see um the developers implemented these kind of horizontal well, vertical sections here and take up quarters of the screen so let's do that for now let's get that um let's get that up and running so actually let's just go into our style.css i'm going to close the uh, javascript files we won't need them for the moment so in our style.css um let's just uh, implement some default styles first okay so we'll go uh, margin zero padding zero and box size in border box okay so that just basically just removes all of the default margins and paddings from our content so we're free to just apply you know we can use our own spacing and margins um, so now the first thing I want to actually do on this hero section is if we just now, what I notice when the user scrolls on this website, you can see that those kind of separator lines in the background kind of tend to stay in the same place. So let's just um, get that going first. So in our body, I'm just going to have an overall div and I'm going to give this a class of, say, line container, like so. Okay, and then in this line, we're going to have, well, three separators. Okay, so we'll just say, um, not separator, We'll just yeah separator like so and then i'm just going to copy this down twice because you can see we only have the three lines here and then what we can do is i'm actually just going to come into our style.css and then let's just get these separators up and running first so we can say um let's just target our html and yeah, HTML, and we're just going to give this a background color of black, like so. So we've got a nice black background now. And then um, in the body, I also just want to, so we'll target the body next. And I want to give this um, an over scroll behavior of, of um, none. Over scroll behavior, none. And what this does, this just basically stops um, if we go to a, I don't know, a website, name cheap, you can see when you scroll up to the top, sometimes you get that over scroll behavior. And what that over scroll behavior none does is that stops that happening. So you don't get that bounce anymore. Okay, so now let's move to, um, let's create, let's, yeah, let's target this line container section in our CSS. Okay, so if we come back to the form, my, my version, we can just say dot line container and I'm going to give this a position of fixed as this will just stay permanently on the, on the background. Give this top of zero and we'll say um, a width of 100%. And I'm going to center this uh, as well. So we'll say left 50% and then we'll say transform and we we'll give this a translate of minus 50%. And then here we can just say, um, we'll say max width, max width, because we only want this to go to a certain, um, certain width, okay, depending on the screen size. So here we can just say, um, I'm actually going to create a root variable. So we'll say uh, CSS variable here, we'll say root, and here we'll create a variable called max width. So I just say, um, yeah, we can say uh, max, double hyphen, max width, and then we'll give this a max width of 1,440 pixels. So now if I specify that down here, we'll say var max width. And then if I just give this a border, just so we can see what we're working with for now, give it a nice red border. And then I'm also just going to say, uh, we'll give this a height of 100 viewport heights, like so. You can see there's it takes up the whole screen now and then you can see we get that max uh, 100 1440 pixels applied when it gets to that point and it's nice and centered okay so now what i want to do here is we can just say um i'll specify overflow hidden just so there's no bleed at all and then now what i want to do is just target those separators okay so we'll get these separators here so i'll just say dot separator and here I'm going to say um, we'll give these a width of 100% no one pixel sorry 
and then we'll give these a height of 100% and then we'll give these a background color of um, let's say background and we'll go for a white here and then we want to make it slightly see-through as well but let's just position these for the time being um, we can position these absolute and now I'm just going to target um, each one separately so we can say separator say nth child one this will target the first um, separator and I can just say left and we'll go for 25% like so and then for the second one so we can just copy this down for the second uh, second child we can say 50% and then for the third uh, we'll go 75% and change that to three Okay, so there's our separators. Now let's just make them, obviously, if we go back to here for our reference, you can see these are actually very um, transparent. So we can actually just uh, tone that white down a bit. Go to come here in VS Code, drag that down to the bottom and just adjust to your taste really. So that looks okay. You can see they're very subtle there in the background. And the good thing about this is when we get to that, that position on our screen, you can see it doesn't grow anymore and we get that nice scented content Okay, I might move it up a little bit, it's a bit faint. But yeah, as I say, adjust the taste. Um, and we can now remove that red border. Okay, so that's our background sorted. Okay, so now let's move on and we can next go to, I'm just going to create this hero section. So we have this nice kind of uh, large um, website title here. It's very minimal website, which I, I kind of like the style of. So let's just go for that now. Um, so we can say here, if we go to index.html, and then underneath this, let's have a section now. Um, actually, no, we'll start, we'll do a main element. We need to use the main element because this, we're going to use this main element just to do some scrolling calculations as we progress further through this series. Um, so I'm going to next in this main element, um, create a section, and then this will have an ID of hero. This will be our hero section. And then coming in here, uh, we can have a div of a class of hero container. This will be used basically just to contain our content. Um, again, we'll specify like a max width on this so it doesn't you know, get too out of control if we're on a massive screen. And then we'll have um, a div for class of hero title. And that should be double underscore. And then in here, we'll have a h1 and we'll give this a class of hero title header. And here I will just uh, say form. Actually, let's just go with my name for now. Okay. And then what I actually want to do is I just want to get my text in here. We can say um, color white we'll just have white text and now you can see that's appeared up there like so um i'm also just going to use an inter font here so if i go to google fonts inter really nice font inter really a well-known font used a uh, used a lot so let's just go with that for this project um let's make it a bit bigger and then take that and then what we can do, I'm using the yeah, regular 400 version. We can copy, actually what I'll do is I'm just gonna down, now we use a CDN for now, that's fine. We can just link here and then I will paste this in our header at the top of our HTML. So if we come underneath, oh, sorry, I'll go above our CSS import. And then you can see there's our Google um, CDN there for our interfont. And then we can just target the uh, CSS rules here. And I'm also just going to paste that in our global settings. So let's just go up to our globals here and we can say font family inter. Now you can see that nice inter font applied. Um, another thing I want to do, um, just um, so it looks better, is there's a technique we can use called in CSS just to smooth out the font. It looks quite fuzzy on some screens, some of these fonts. So. To make it look a lot smoother, we can use this WebKit font smoothing. And here we can say anti-aliased, like so. And 
you might not notice it too much, but it does make a difference. I've noticed on some of my projects when you make this apply this CSS setting, it does look a lot smoother. Some fonts, and here we can just say font. Um, I'll specify a font weight here. We'll just make it all 400, just make it a bit lighter. Okay, so that's looking better. Now, the next thing I want to do here um, is if we come back to our HTML, we'll come into our hero section, and then underneath this um, hero title div here, um, I'm just going to have a div with a hero um, CTA class. And here we can just say H4 Studio, like so. Okay, so now let's make this look better. So what we can do is if I first go back to our style.css and we can just, um, if I just target, if we go under here, um, so this will be, let's just make sure so we can say here that this is our global section. This is just our, our line container section. And now we can target our hero section. So let's just label this like so. So hero. And then and actually, in, let's target the main. So we're going to the global section first. So for the main uh, div, uh, we'll say display flex. And here we want to say width, give it a width of 100%. And then we can say flex direction uh, column because I want our website, all of our sections to be laid out in a column format. And then we can just say um, justify content flex start. This will push all the content to the top so it's on top of each other. And then we can just say align items to the center. And that centers our content horizontally. Okay, as we're in a flex direction column, we can use the align items to center them horizontally. Okay, so that's our main element. Now let's move on to our, um, let's just target all of our sections as well. So we're going to be using sections, as you can see here, our hero section is using a section element. So I just want to, for all of these sections, just give them a width of 100%, like so. Okay, and now I'm going to target specifically our hero section. So if we do hashtag hero, and then we can just give this a position of relative. Okay, and then again, we'll be using display flex, really powerful tool, flex box. And then we can just say again, flex direction of column. Okay, so if I just uncomment that a second, that's fine. Okay, then we can say flex direction column. And then um, underneath this, we can just say align items center. And then we can here say justify content to the uh, center as well. And also I want to give this um, a height. And we'll just say min content. Okay. Um, so that's there. And now what I want to do, so is target our, remember we have this container. Okay, so we have our hero container here. So let's just grab that now. We'll just say dot hero double underscore container. And then I'm going to say here, let's give this a height of 100 viewport heights. And then we can also just say here, um, a width of 100% as well. Oh. So it'll fill out 100% of the actual hero element. Only on this one, though, we're going to give this a max width so it doesn't spread out too much. We can say max width of, um, and we use that var max width variable we use. So it only, this hero container will only go to, you can see there, 1400 pixels. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do here is if we come underneath this, um, again, we'll just say, well, display flex. And then we can say um, justify content uh, center, um, align items. Um, and we can say center as well. And then you can see that these are next to each other. So what I want to do is just say um, flex direction column and that will move them underneath. Okay, 
Now let's move on to the hero container. Um, so not the hero container. Let's go to, um, let's just create a gap here as well. So I just say gap and we'll just say 80 pixels. That'll give us a nice 80 pixel spacing between the, um, the CTA and the header. Now let's go to um, the hero title header. So we have here hero container and then we'll, yeah, we'll go to the hero title. So let's just do that for now. Now, the reason we're doing this hero title div, we're wrapping this in a div, this, this um, H1, is because you'll see when we actually, when the site loads, you get this nice kind of reveal animation. And that's because there's this outer div used to, with an overflow hidden. So we can see it just reveal um, from, under, well, from beyond the div um, border. Okay, so let's just um, specify that here. We just say overflow hidden. And then we can next go to the um, dot hero underscore title header. And here I'm going to give this, um, let's just give it, let's sort the size out for now. We'll say font size. And we're going to use um, a relatively new unit here. So this is, we're going to be using uh, 20 CQI. Okay, and this is a container query unit. And what this will do, it just grow with the screen. Okay, so it, it references the um, the main container. Um, so we get this kind of fluid um, growth with our text depending on the screen size. Now, what I do want to do is actually clamp this. So we can use the CSS function called clamp here. And what we can do here, we get the first argument, we specify the um, smallest uh, unit or smallest volume value the uh, text can be. So here I'm just going to say two rem. Um, and then in general, we want it to be 20 C container query units. And then for the largest, we want it to go up to 20 rem. Okay, so now when this grows, when it gets to 20 rem in size, you should see it will stop growing. And you can see that's 20 rem there. And our text stops growing when we move our screen size. Okay, so again, justice to taste, but that works good for me. And then, so kind of underneath this, I just want to say letter spacing as well. I want to go minus 0.5 M just to bring the text slightly close together. It looks a bit spread out for me. And then let's also um, just give this some margin bottom as well. Uh, so we'll say margin bottom and I'll say two rem. And that will just lift it up a slight bit. I don't want it to be too centered. And yeah, that looks okay. So, well, it's similar to what we have here. It's not exact, but, you know, it's the main, um, we're just looking to kind of get these scroll animations for this tutorial. So that looks good enough for me. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for our hero. Obviously, we'll do the, the um, nav bar sooner, like later in the series, but we can just move on for now. Um, so if we now go to our index, um, and then we're going to add another section, we'll just call this about some reason, yeah, okay, so we can see this about text shows up here. I don't know why it's faded away now, actually. I think there's a bug with this uh, website. But yeah, you can see there's our about text. And it gradually uh, reveals in. So let's just get that up and running. So if we if we come here, we'll do it, come under our um, hero section. We'll do another section. And here we can just give this an ID of, uh, give this an ID of about. And then here we can say um, uh, dot about container. We'll have another container. And then we'll also just say, um, we'll say about text. And then we can then say, um, I'm just going to give some lorem text in here, like so. So now if we come down, you can see yeah, there's our kind of about text there. So let's style this out now. Let's go back into our style.css. And then I'm just going to come under here and we can specify um, about, about section. Okay, so let's um, grab our about uh, section using the uh, 
and maybe we gave this an ID of about here. So now we can just say about, and we're going to again say display flex, and then justify content center. Like so. And then under here, we'll go to the, we'll target the about container. And then we can say here, um, again, display flex. Um, we'll say justify content center again. And then we can also say align items center. And then we'll say uh, width. Again, we want to use that var sorry, max, um, yeah, width of 100%. And then we'll give it a max width of var max width. Okay, so we should see, yeah, that um, when we get to that certain point, the text gets centered. Okay, um, so next thing I want to do here is just target the about text. So we'll say dot about uh, text, like so. And we can say here, um, we'll just go uh, width of 45%. Okay, and then we can also just say, um, I think that's pretty much it actually for the time being. So we can see here, it is nice and centered. Um, and then if we come back, so let's just, yeah, we can say width 45% and we'll say margin auto just as always it's always it always remains centered um, and then I'm going to text align uh, center you can see here that the um, developers actually centered this text so we'll go for that approach as well and then what I want to say here is text transform as well we'll go for uppercase just to make it all uppercase and then we can say, uh, I want to do a text wrap. And we can say balance here. Okay, and what that does, that just balances out the text. So it's always, it always tries to even the size of the lines. And I think, what else do we want to do here? Let's just say, um, I think that's pretty much it. Let's just go for a min height on the about container. So min height of 100 VH. Okay. Yeah, so that will do. Um, yeah, maybe, I don't know, we'll go for 50. Yeah, okay, that looks better to me. So let's just go with that. And then I think yeah, that'll pretty much do. So now let's move on to the video. Actually, what we can do is just see what the developer's actually done here, flat height. Um, we are, you can see he's got a min height of this of 100 viewport heights for this section. So let's go for that as well. I'll just say, yeah, min height. And there you go. Okay, and I might just make that text a bit bigger actually. So let's just go for um, font size uh, 1.4m. There you go. Okay, that looks better. Um, and I'll just you know, bring the letter spacing in a bit as well. So let's go letter spacing minus 0.5m. Okay, cool, that looks better. Now let's go to the video section next. So if we come back to our HTML, that's it for our about section. So another section under here, give us an ID of video. Okay, so now if we come to our video, um, uh, in, this, in this section here, we're going to have a div with a class of sticky. Okay, and what this will do, this will allow us to get that effect of when we scroll to the video, you'll see that it actually stops. When we, I'm still scrolling now, you can see we get that, 
the um, the video stops in the middle of the screen and then starts scaling to the screen size. So that's with, the way they've achieved that is by using a sticky um, div. So let's do that now. So we can say here, um, within this sticky, we're just going to say, uh, want a video. And then we can actually, let me just grab a video from Unsplash. Right, so now we'll grab the video that they use. Um, so I can just say, if we just uh, inspect, um, let's grab this video. Uh, okay, so we have a video here. So let's copy this source. See, so we've got this MP4. Use whatever video you want for this, really. I'm just going to use this video for now. So we have this actual, we can actually copy this. Um, so let's just, um, in the source tag here, we'll, we'll put that link. And now if we come back to our page, you can see, yep, yeah, we have the video. Now what you notice is it doesn't actually play at first. So we just have to do some, um, add some attributes here. So for the video, within the video, we can put auto play. So that auto plays when you load the page. We also want to say muted, okay? Because some browsers, well, most browsers won't play the video unless it's actually muted, okay? Um, and then we'd also want to just say loop, and that will make the uh, video just in, you know, loop all the time. So when it gets to the end, it will restart. And then also, we need to add another attribute called plays in line. And this will just make it auto play on mobile phones because you need that attribute. Otherwise it won't play automatically on mobile devices. Okay, so that's looking good. Now the next thing I want to do here is, I think that's it for our HTML. So now let's just go to our CSS and we'll target our video next. So let's go to say video here. And then here, I'm just going to say, um, so for our video, again, we're going to use display flex. So target our video section, display flex. And then we want to say, um, uh, justify content center. And then we'll just say, um, I'm gonna give us a min height of 200 viewport heights. And you'll see why we're doing this shortly. Okay, so now this video has a min height of 200 viewport heights. If I just um, do a border of one pixel solid red. Can't really see that very well. Let's just do 10 pixels for now. Okay, so that you can see we have our video section and the height is 200 viewport heights. And we need that just so we can make this kind of sticky effect work, okay? So now underneath this, next one I want to do is target the sticky element. So we say sticky. And here, I want to give the sticky um, a position of sticky. Okay, and then we can just say top zero. So just to show you, you remember we have our video and then in this section we have this sticky div. Okay, so this sticky div here. And then we can just say top zero and then we'll give this a width of 100% and then we can just say a height of 100 viewport heights. So now you can see now I'm actually scrolling. If I set this top to 10 pixels, you'll see when we get to that sticky div, it will stop 10 pixels from the top of the screen. Okay, can you see that stop there? That video stopped 10 pixels. I'm still scrolling. And then when it gets to the bottom of the sticky section, it continues to scroll. But that's what that sticky is doing. It's making the video stop 10 pixels from the top of the screen. Okay, so let's just set that back to zero. Now, what we want to do is I next want to target my actual video. So we'll go for that video. And then I'm going to position this absolute. And we can just say, give it some width of 100% to fill 100% of the uh, container. And then I also want to give this a height of 100%. And then next thing I want to do here is I'm going to say um, object fit cover. So how's that looking? 
Okay, so we have our video there, and now that's covering I'm covering the div, that's cool. And now the next thing I want to do is just transform this. So if we transform this, and I'm going to scale this to 0 0.5. Okay, so now you can see it's well, 0.5% of the, um, the main container. And now what we want to do here is I'm just going to specify a will change transform. Okay, so now that we have that, let's just remove this border. Actually, I'll keep it on just so we can see how that's working. Um, so yeah, so this video is within the sticky div and that's got to height of 100 viewport height. So that height is taking up 100% of the, the viewport height, okay? But we've scaled it, you can see here, when we take that scale off, the video takes up 100%, but we're starting with that initial scale of 0.5, which basically halves the size on the X and Y um, axis, okay? So that's pretty much it now. Let's just go to some JavaScript now and just get that um, kind of, um, that animation going on scroll. So let's do that. Let's just go into our JavaScript file. And we can say here, um, we want to um, grab our video, okay? So we come to our app.js, and here we're just going to say const um, video equals document.querySelector, and we can just say video. And then we can also just grab the uh, video section. So say const video section equals document dot query selector. So say dot video section like so. Okay, and then um, what we want to do is we can come under here and we're going to say window dot add event listener. Let's list that for the scroll event. Okay. And then what this does, this will trigger this function. And here, if we just for now, for example, say console.log window.scroll wire, you'll see what this does. This scroll event listener will now log the amount of pixels we've scrolled in the console. As you can see here at the top with zero, and then as it goes down, we get the amount of pixels we've scrolled by. Okay, so let's now create a function we'll say um, function animate video. Okay, and then in here, what we're going to do first is we're going to get the bottom, um, the bottom of our, well, the bottom position of our sticky div, okay? Because when we reach the bottom, we want, when we reach here, we want our screen, to, um, our video to be the full size of the screen, okay? When we get to the bottom of this sticky div, so to do that, let's just say let's bottom, we'll destructure this. So we say let's bottom. And that's going to equal um, video section. Once we get the video section, um, dot get banding client rect. And that will destructure the bottom from that. So now if we console.log bottom, and then if I come into our scroll listener here and I can just say animate video, we'll call that function. Okay, so it can't read that. Why? Um, video section. All right, why is that? Okay, sorry, yeah, we need to just um, target the section here. So I'm just going to say, remember, our actual video section like div has that border. So let's just do that. Um, so we can just say video here. So now when we scroll, you can see we get the bottom position. So right at the moment, this bottom, the bottom of this div, this section is 954 pixels from the top of the viewport. Okay, as we scroll up, you can see that gets bigger. So at the start of the um, website, the bottom div is 3816 pixels away and it gets smaller as you scroll towards it. So now what we can do, um, we can say, um, we want to scale this now. So we'll just say, let scale. And what we're going to say here is equals um, one minus, okay, and then 
we'll say we'll do some brackets here we'll get that bottom so double bracket and then we need to subtract the window dot inner height okay and the reason we're doing that remember i said because when we get to the bottom of this page or this section we still have to consider the 954 pixels which is the viewport height to make that zero so we need to subtract this number okay and then what we're doing is we're saying we're taking one and we're minusing this number okay um, and that will mean so if we have one minus nothing because it will be as the bottom will be as this bottom minus the window height will be zero that will just leave it at one which means it will scale to 100 percent so that's what we're doing there and then what i can say here um is I just want to times this by a small number, we'll say 0, 0, 0, 0005. Okay, and then what we can say now is if we just do video dot style uh, dot transform equals, and then we can say translate, um, no, sorry, scale. And then I'm just going to take that scale variable see this goes kind of a bit over the place at first but you can see as we can move closer we get there that's looking good okay and now what I want to do is just say um, I just want to apply some um, just one I just want to add one more bit of code just to stop it going out of proportion really this is just like a safety net we can just say scale take that scale variable we just created equals and we can say if the scale is less than 0.2 question mark then we'll just say leave it at 0.2 so it doesn't get any smaller than that otherwise if the scale is greater than one which means it's the full size it takes up the full viewport we don't want it to get any bigger than that so we can just leave it at one okay otherwise just let it scale as as, as required okay so this is quite you know these this is called um uh, it's, yeah, this is just a way. It's like an if statement, really. So what we're saying here, we're taking that scale. We're saying if it's if it's less than two, depending on our screen position, our scroll position. If it's less than point two, then leave it. Then make it point two. Don't let it get any smaller. Otherwise, else this is like an else statement. This colon will say if the scale is greater than one, keep it at one. Don't grow any larger than one because I want it to like bleed from the uh, container. Otherwise, just use the um, scale variable that was set. And then we can just um, apply that here in the scale. So now let's remove this. We don't need that anymore. And I can take away this border like so. And now we should get this effect working nicely. So if I scroll down, you can see we get that here. And then we can see our video will stop in the center and then it will grow on scroll until we get to the bottom of the section and it will be the full size of the screen. Okay, so that's that. Um, that's that working now. That's looking good. I'm going to see this um, first uh, episode here. Um, obviously, there's a still a lot of lot to go in this um, in this uh, series. You can see this. We have this nice horizontal scroll section next. Then we have this cool blog area as well, where you know it, it sort of um, goes to the center. And this is all using the kind of sticky uh, div technique that we've used so far. Okay, so yeah, there you go, there you have it. We'll um, also implement the animations going forward as well, you know, like the text reveal. And obviously we have the overlay text as well we need to add to this video where it comes across as the user scrolls. But yeah, let's leave it there for now and I will see you in part two. Thanks guys.